Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Okay, we've covered the two big bleeding disorders, von Willebrand disease and hemophilias A and B. But plot twist. The inherited coagulopathies aren't actually the biggies when it comes to number of people affected. Acquired coagulopathies, such as disseminated intravascular coagulation and vitamin K deficiency, are much more prevalent, affecting millions of people around the world each year. Let's get started with the true biggie. Disseminated intravascular coagulation, abbreviated DIC, represented in this scene by a roll of the DIC dice. Ah yeah, get that crit. You gotta get that crit. <clears throat> Sorry. Actually, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. You can't just jump right into D&D. &D. Don't worry, though. I'll take you through it, step by step. Starting with the most fun part, creating your character. Next step, coming up with an intricate backstory. And in this scene, we're featuring the story of disseminated intravascular coagulation. DIC is one of, if not the worst, forms of acquired coagulopathy. Normal coagulation is a protective mechanism with lots of negative feedback systems built in. Because, well, the consequences of clotting on haywire are catastrophic. It's a precisely balanced scale. More procoagulant factors leads to coagulation. More anticoagulants, well, you know how the scale works. DIC, on the other hand, is sort of like putting so much weight on both sides that the scale just breaks. DIC involves exaggerated activation of both the coagulation and fibrinolytic system simultaneously. That means excessive clotting and bleeding. See the board? Not only are there thrombotic trees gunking up those vascular rivers, we've included a hemorrhagic drink spilling across the table. It's weird, I know. You're new to this game. The most frequently encountered version of DIC is the acute type. And by acute, we mean that DIC starts with sudden activation of the coagulation cascade after an exposure to some kind of procoagulant substance. Gram-negative sepsis and infection, especially by Neisseria meningitidis, are the most common causes of DIC, in which bacterial proteins and lipopolysaccharides activate coagulation through a variety of complex mechanisms. This is symbolized by the discard pile for the dead game pieces, the septic pile. We even incorporated a gram-negative bacterial design into the border. Inside, notice that we've thrown in a few of those thrombotic tree pieces as well. Remember, we're promoting clot formation here. In reality, a variety of organisms can precipitate DIC, including fungi, viruses, and parasites. For the other causes of acute DIC, keep hypercoagulable conditions in mind. This includes malignancy, especially acute promyelocytic leukemia, trauma, obstetric complications, all kinds of stuff. DIC is almost always seen in patients who are already critically ill. Think ICU level sick. To make things even worse, critically ill patients often also have concomitant acidosis and hypothermia, conditions that further disable clotting factors and contribute to the bleeding seen in DIC. We've been focusing on hypercoagulation states though. So why all the bleeding? Well, previously, in Sketchy Farm, we represented clotting factors with clotting fighters all working together with the common objective of controlling that bleeding process. In this scene, the coagulation fighters are the game pieces, and they're tumbling off the board to evoke an image of a consumptive coagulopathy. DIC involves an initial coagulation cascade overdrive, resulting in the depletion of essentially every coagulation component, both pro and anticoagulant. Lots of clotting means lots of platelet plugs forming as well. So down go those platelets as depicted by these discarded plates. As DIC progresses, the consumption of platelets, clotting factors, and anticoagulants outpaces their production. This leads to the interesting scenario in which both bleeding and thrombosis are a constant risk. Bleeding is the more common manifestation. So let's start there. 